Now let's look at a different scenario. A different scenario. We are looking at uh, a related phase diagram. Binary, component A on one side, component B on the other side. Above liquid line, we have uniform liquid solution. Below solid line, initially we have single phase solid solution of alpha, but below this solid line we have alpha prime plus alpha double prime that's a plus sign here means it is so-called two-phase region but we list them both as alpha which means the two phase from what you learn in thermodynamics have the same crystal crystal structure but different uh, composition and uh, different uh, lattice parameter and these things, people in thermodynamics or phase diagram, people call it so miscibility gap. It's a binary system with a miscibility gap. Okay, and we still put piece one and piece two together. Now piece one here, piece two here, and we choose a temperature T that is below the critical temperature of the miscibility gap. So we are choosing one piece here, one piece over there initially. We put them together, join them closely at this temperature. Initially, they have different uh, composition, different same, same crystal structure, but different uh, lattice parameter. And uh, similar as before, the piece one would be closer to A, which means piece one is A rich. Piece 2 is closer to B, which means piece 2 is B rich. Okay, now when we put them together, but based on equilibrium phase diagram, eventually when we do this thing, is it going to be forming a single phase solid solution? No, right? We are here. So we are somewhere, it's going to be still two phase. And in reality, people actually observed it's going to experience so-called uphill diffusion. The elements will diffuse to the region that is higher in its concentration, going uphill from concentration point of view. For A element, it's actually from 2 to 1, from the piece that is deficient in A going to the piece that is richer in A. That's so-called uphill diffusion. Okay. Despite, despite this piece x two A on this side is actually smaller than x one A. Why that? That's who hopefully we want to understand. Similarly, for the other species. For B element, it's actually going also uphill from the one that is richer in A or leaner or more deficient in B towards the one that is already richer in B. That's what we call uphill diffusion. Okay, despite the one piece has concentration of B smaller than the two piece of B. Again, similarly, why? And uh, when we do think of these things, we always go back to what uh, from thermodynamics point of view, okay? Driving force. We said what drives the system change is always due to the change in system gives free energy. And uh, from what you learn in thermodynamics, for temperature below the miscibility cap, interestingly, the Gibbs free energy washes composition curve to look quite often these types of weird shape. Okay, zigzag kind of shape. Higher in the middle, lower, and then higher again towards the end. This shape. And for our piece one, it corresponds to G1. G1 represents the initial molar Gibbs free energy for the uniform piece 1. G2 represents the molar Gibbs free energy for the piece 2. And then the initial system Gibbs free energy. Remember, our system contains some part of piece 1 and some part of 
piece too. So initial system should lie somewhere along this tight line. Where exactly it lies depends on the relative amount. That's what we said before, right? If we are almost all one and very little two, we would lie very close to the left side. On the other hand, if we are roughly 50-50 as what we draw, we would lie, the system would lie roughly 50-50 on that tie line. That's our so-called initial, I for initial system gives free energy. Okay. And then what about the final system? We said, okay, when everything settled, when everything reaches their so-called equilibrium, the system would reach kind of a minimum Gibbs free energy. And from what you learn in thermodynamics, it's going to lie at the so-called common tangent line. Because we are now in not single phase region, we are in two phase region. We are in two phase region. We are gonna lie in this common tangent line, in this two phase region. Okay? And if you collect from your uh, thermodynamics, the phase boundary of this point actually corresponds to our one of the tangential point. One prime would correspond to here. Okay? And two prime, the other tangent line would correspond to the other boundary, assuming we reach equilibrium. Okay? And the system energy lies still somewhere here. Of course, if we are 50-50, we are roughly here. Makes sense for the final state. So, this is our equilibrium of final state. This is our initial state. At the system level, initial state, free energy higher than final state. And this drop or reduction in system free energy, that's driving the system from its original state to the final state. That's at system level. And then at the so-called uh, component or each individual element level, okay, we are going to consider so-called chemical potential, mu for chemical potential. And the chemical potential for A and B for piece one initially would be given by the tangent, okay? One side extends for A element in one, the other side for B element still in one. Similarly, we can get the other tangent to get the chemical potential for A and B in piece two. Now looking at this curve. For element A or component A, in which piece it has higher chemical potential? Well, not one. Despite the one piece is actually A rich. The chemical potential is higher in piece two, and then of course naturally mu two A greater than mu one A, and then naturally it's going from high chemical potential to low chemical potential, and eventually to reach equilibrium. Questions? Similarly, for element B, the piece one initially is at higher chemical potential goes to piece two, and uh, this is at component level, what drives it. This is so-called uphill diffusion. Diffusion of elements to the region that is higher in its concentration, but from chemical potential point of view, it's still driven by the reduction in chemical potential for each of the components. Okay, that's an important concept. You may ask, okay, Dr. Chen, can I, how do I use this? Well, it's more theoretical. It's important to understand at this point. And keep this in mind. Uphill diffusion is relatively, yes, not very common, but it's theoretically important. We have to keep that in mind. It happens in certain cases within the miscibility gap. And we are going to talk about well within the miscibility gap below the critical temperature, okay. Give me a second. <laughs> 